am an avid NCIS fan. And if you know the origin of that word, yes, there are some people who would say I am a fanatic about NCIS. I love each episode. I love the way that you get sucked into the storyline. I love the way that it unfolds and you begin to recognize the pattern and you begin to recognize how things are going to be resolved. But what I really enjoy is the ongoing character development throughout the series of the regular characters. Over the seasons, each one of them has experienced one or more pivotal moments, turning points that have impacted their perspective and the direction of their lives. It makes for good TV, but it also makes for some really great reflections on life and on relationships. Our passage today highlights some major turning points. Major turning points for John, major turning points for the Jewish community, and major turning points for Jesus. So John's been stirring things up in the Jewish community, running around wearing camel hair clothes and eating locusts and wild honey and living in the wilderness and, and being a little bit out there, drawing attention to himself by his unusualness, declaring to all that it's time to prepare the way for the Lord. Some folks are excited about his message, to be sure. Others, not so much. But clearly, there's a belief on his part that things are going to be changing. Things are going to be different. And then Jesus shows up. Jesus, the one that John's been waiting for and preaching about, and Jesus wants John to baptize him. Can you imagine? Can you imagine being John and having Jesus show up and want you to baptize him? I think John reacts exactly the way we would expect, exactly the way we would react. Wait, who? Me? You want me to baptize you? You've got to be kidding a major turning point for both John and Jesus. John realizes that this is the moment that his ministry has been leading him to. He can forge ahead in his faith and take those steps, or he can shrink back from it, questioning his worthiness. And for Jesus, this is a start. This is a defining moment. And upon coming up out of the waters after his baptism, there is an experience. Now, does it literally happen in the way that the author describes? Did everyone see the heavens open and the dove descend? Did everyone hear the voice of God? Or was it an internal experience Jesus had? a recognition for himself that he was in the middle of wanting those turning point moments. I don't know. What I do know is that something significant happened in that moment, and it changed the world. It's easy for us to sit back and watch or hear about these major turning points in other people's lives and accept them as plausible, whether it's on a TV episode or whether it's in a Bible story. When it's happening to someone else, it seems like it can be very realistic. But are we open to those turning points happening in our own lives? Do we recognize them when they happen when we're in the midst of them? Do we see the ministry that we do, that we can connect with in our community, like supporting and participating in meal ministries 
that serve our neighbors? Do we see those kinds of things as turning points, both for our neighbors and for ourselves? Are we open to God's movement and God's voice as we explore new ways to connect with one another, to connect with our community, and to connect with our wider church? Turning points can occur for us in so many different ways. And one of the things that I value and love so much about the ministry that happens at our church camp experiences is that for some reason, people seem to be much more open to recognizing and accepting these turning point type of experiences at camp. There's just something that happens in that space, in that place. I firmly believe that all of our earth is sacred space. And yet, there is something about places like Temple Hills that is different. There's a singer and songwriter whose name is Brian Sergio, and he sings a song called Mark This Place, and it shares this perspective so well. In his song, he writes, as we journey through our lives, there are places, there are times, where the spirit seems to touch us in ways that change it all. Holy places, holy ground, holy spirit, all around, place where we seem to hear God's call. There are places where the veil that can seem to separate things of God from things of this world, where that veil becomes so very thin that we sense God passing through, making promises anew, and speaking words God knows we need to hear. There are these turning point moments, moments when God is present in ways that just don't seem to happen elsewhere, moments that are truly life-changing. And if you're involved in the camping ministry at all, you have the privilege sometimes of witnessing those moments. When children from diverse backgrounds spend time together, worshiping, playing, swimming, sharing a meal, they realize not how much they have that are different about each other, but they realize how much they have in common, how much they can support one another, how much they can love one another. That's a turning point. When an eighth grade girl struggling with all of the yuck that can be junior high life for an eighth grade girl. When she realizes that she likes the person she is at camp, lovable and confident about herself, and she chooses consciously to live into being that person all the time, that's a turning point when grandparents find themselves in moments of sharing their faith with their grandchildren around a campfire during an evening Vesper service, when grandchildren sit and listen and learn and bond with their grandparents over shared faith stories, that's a turning point. When a very intelligent fifth grader while exploring what it means for each generation to make this faith their own, which is a call to us from our preamble of the Constitution of our United Church of Christ. When a fifth grader wrestles with her love for logic and science and provable facts, and she tries to balance that with her love for God and humanity and her deepening faith and her questions, and when she lands in a space with tears streaming down her face and says, so I can be a scientist and believe in God too? That's a turning point. And 
when a young adult, after conversation and prayer and silence in the woods and many tears, begins to recognize a discernible call to serve God and the church in a professional ministry role, that's a turning point. These life-changing moments, these faith-forming moments, are why our outdoor ministries experiences are so important and so valuable to our church members of all ages. And the most important part of all of that is bringing that new perspective, that renewed faith, that understanding of a call back into our local faith community. That's the foundation of our faith experiences. Turning points. They may be major moments. They may be small experiences. They may occur at camp or in worship or out in the community. My prayer for each of us is that our heart remains open and eager for the voice and the spirit of our still speaking God. That we might recognize and embrace each turning point with grace and peace and enthusiasm and love. And that we will know that God speaks to us as well, saying, these are my children whom I dearly love, and I find happiness in them. Amen.